uh, Rob, if I could, I'd like to thank you for your wonderful inspirational drop um, I'm at, my name's Simon Levine, and uh, my son Shmuel is actually at CF Sod in your Schleim, and a lot of what you said I was able to personally relate to, and hopefully I'll come out in, in, in a story about our family. Um, we used to live in Edgware, we made Aliyah about four and a half years ago, primarily for Shmuel. Um, Shmuel's now 16 and a half, and he's very much changed in all the time he's been at CF Sod. A um, bit of a history about, about uh, our family in Shmuel. The NHS don't like to label children with any sort of disability until they are quite old. But Shmuel was so profound that at 18 months he was actually given a formal diagnosis of severe autism because he was so profound. He, was, he had very poor uh, eye contact, he was in a world of his own, um, and they actually, because he was so unresponsive, they actually thought he had hearing problems, but Rukashen, he didn't. He was a sweet and lovable child, but it was difficult to look after. Um, we had, he had no sense of danger, so we had to watch him, that he didn't run out into the street. Um, he ate very little, and he also ate things that weren't meant to be eaten. He also, uh, in school, he liked to play with scissors. Uh, we, he came home one day, he had cut the pattern out of his shirt. And we actually got a call one day from the school saying he had systematically gone round and cut all the, all the wires, all the keyboards on the, com the computer mouses. Suffice to say, the school went wireless after that. <laughs> um, but that, that's, that's what he liked to do. Um, one of the problems with having a child with special needs is it not only affects the child, it affects the whole family. And my daughter didn't have any proper dolls, but she would chew all the feet off the dolls. I once came home from work and found that that day he didn't like things that were round. So unfortunately there went our CDs and our DVDs, which he, which he, uh, he broke. One of the hardest things um, was actually not only having to watch him or make sure he didn't eat foods he wasn't, or things he wasn't meant to eat, but he had to have foods cut and prepared in a certain way. For example, with cucumbers, they had to be peeled, they had to be cut into sticks, otherwise he, would, he wouldn't eat them. He couldn't have dairy, he couldn't have gluten, so my wife really had a tough job in preparing food for us and a special diet for Shmuel. Like all parents, we tried all the type of therapies you could get, like first gene method, ABA, occupational therapy, speech therapy. They all helped, but they didn't really um, do much for him, and he was still difficult to look after. We had Shmuel in a special uh, integrated uh, nursery and then a primary school. He was very hyperactive, and unfortunately one of the problems we had is when he wasn't happy or he couldn't express himself, he did, ha he did hit himself which is very difficult as a parent to, to see. So after a lot of years, my wife and I took the difficult decision that we felt he needed to go into a residential school. And we wanted him to go into a Jewish school, and the only option we had was a school near Manchester called Delamere Forest. So we contacted Barnet Council, and they were very sympathetic, but we just had discussed with them for a year. And after a year, they phoned us up and said, they're gonna fund Shmuel to go to Delamere, which was, which was great. And I always remember the day, two weeks later, I came home, and I came in, I said to my wife, how was your day? She sat there completely unresponsive. And I said, what's going on? She just got a call from Delamere saying they were closing due to lack of numbers. So you can imagine the effect it had on our, on our family. <coughs> so to Bonnet's, to Bonnet's credit, they actually phoned up and they said, look, we've heard Delamere are closing. We found another school in Staffordshire, I think it was. It's a lot more money, but if you want him in, money's not a problem, he's in. But we wanted him to be in a Jewish school because whilst he was in a world of his own, we felt he was in, he had a connection with his Yiddish guy. And one of the, the things I would explain about this was on a Friday night, we'd be typically sitting around having our suda, and Shmuel would come up to me and my wife and start tugging at our arm and saying, Havdala, Havdala. Now, it's Friday night, why would he say that? Because there are certain toys and games that during the week he loved to play. But as soon as he saw my wife lighting the candles on the Friday night, he knew that he, until I said have done and he saw the candle on Monte Shabbos, certain toys he wasn't allowed to play with. So he was eager to say have done. So we knew that he understood something, so we wanted him in the Jewish school. So my wife and I decided she would go off to Israel for about four or five days, see what options there were. And she came back and said, yeah, there's a number of residential schools that Shmuel can go to but we'd have to have him in a day school for six to nine months because the, he had to go through evaluations, committees and paperwork. And she'd been to Seach Sod and was very impressed by what they had to offer. So we decided in March 2012, we made Aliyah for, for Shmuel and the rest of us. And I said, we were planning six to nine months to be in Seach Sod. 
it's now four and a half years. With the work on, on certain things I'm going to say to you, Shmuel's improved so much, we've given up on the residential idea. He's very much now a part of the family, which is great for ourselves and, and the rest of us. Just after we made Aliyah, we, we sat down with the school and we explained to them various challenges and issues that he had. And we mentioned one was food. And I always remember the day about three months later, I, I worked from a, an office in my home and the phone rang and my wife picked it up and she was on speakerphone. And there was people singing and, 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 and celebrating. And I came out and I said, what's going on? And my wife ran up to me and said, it's a yogurt, it's a yogurt. So the only thing I could think to say was Masseltov. So what she'd explained is after the meeting, her um, Shmuel's Rebbe had basically gone out to the Marcola and bought a yogurt. And over three months, they'd started by getting him sitting next to a yogurt, opening a yogurt, tasting it. And after three months, he, they got him to eat a whole yogurt. And they, the Rebbe's were celebrating as if they won the lottery. You know, they, 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 they were celebrating that Shmuel's personal challenge of getting him to eat something he'd never eaten before. But they were taking personal pleasure and that shows the care and interest that the teachers of CX Lod have. We've since had further phone calls like that when he got, got him to eat a schnitzel, pasta, rice, kugel. And so now Shmuel, on Shabbos for example, will sit down with us at the, at the Suda. But he's also confident enough that he'll tell us what food he wants, how much he wants, and everything. And that's, that's great, for, great for us. Um, um, I remember just after that we had a parents' evening. and. We sat down there, didn't know what to expect, and the Rebbe was basically saying how brilliant Shmuel was, his chat is, how he's overcome his challenges, and we're obviously very, very happy. And then my wife happened to say, you know, we're a bit worried because in his old school in England, he got some scissors and went around cutting all the keyboard cables, and the Rebbe smiled and went, yeah, he did that here as well. But it just encouraged us to go wireless. But they didn't, and we offered. <laughs> <laughs> we we offered the paper. They said no. That's how we start. We understand the children. We see how they behave, and we understand how to help them through. Another concern we had was when we made Aliyah. It was about a year before his bar mitzvah. Now, because of his severe autism, he could only speak about ten words when we made when we made Aliyah. So over the months, the teachers worked with him. And the Thursday before his Aliyah, they brought Shmuel and his class of seven kids to the Koso. And we had our own minion. And Shmuel was able to say his brachas, both before and after his Aliyah, very, very clearly. And afterwards, we went back to Seyach Sod and they held a party. I remember our you know, we had a big party for Shmuel. And then they got on Shabbos and Shul. He also said the brachas again, very confidently, very clearly. And afterwards, I saw one of my cousins crying. And I went over and I said, what are you crying for? And she said, well, when she was organising her son's bar mitzvah and when her friends were organising, you know, they were discussing how much is the child going to lane, is he going to daven from the Omid on Friday night and, and Shabbos. And, see, and they, you know, saying the brachas was just a given, you know, it wasn't a second thought. But seeing how much more the effort he'd gone to just to say his brachas gave her a brand new perspective. Um, one of the things that probably upset me most when we were living here in Edgware was Shmuel, we couldn't get him to show. Because of the noise and the people in show, he was very nervous and very unsettled. In fact, the only time of the year that we actually tried to get him to show was Simchas Tairas. Because even though he might scream or he's uncomfortable with the singing and the hakafa, no one ever noticed. But thanks to the teachers and the work they've done at Siach Sod, he comes with me now to show all the time. He, in fact, he actually rushes me out the door on Friday night and Shabbos morning because he wants to get to show early. Um, he sits there, he doesn't necessarily daven, but you know, he'll say Shema, he'll say Shema with everybody. And actually, because we're living him now after Kedusha, he's one of the first people to rush out so he can actually wash the Kayan's hands for duchening. It's something he loves to do. Last year, he actually stayed with me all day in Shul for Yom Kippur. And in fact, he stood for the whole in the Ila. I, was, was, I actually told him he can sit down. No, he wanted to stay. That last hour and a half, he wanted to stay, and he fasted all day as well. Um, Thank you. Um, and also, one of the one of the things that we're also appreciative of is they actually they've actually taught him some life skills. Um, I once had after his bar mitzvah, one of our close friends came up, and I know they were trying to say something nice, but it just came out the wrong way. And they said, you know, what's it like? How am my wife going to cope? The Shmuel's not going to be a normal teenager. So I said, you're right. He's not going to be a normal teenager. You know, he makes his bed in the morning. He tidies his room, he folds his clothes, <laughs> and, and, and he even washes the dishes. That's not normal behaviour for a teenager. <laughs> but, you know, we'll cope with it. Um, one of the 
issues that an autistic child will have is they're generally being in a world of their own. They can't bond. They find it difficult to have an emotional bond mm -hmm. with everyone, with anyone. And that's, again, what we found here. But now he's actually got a very close emotional bond with his siblings, his brother and his sisters. In fact, our youngest is three and a half. And they actually play together. He actually sits down. He has time for her. And they play very, very nicely. Out of appreciation for Sikh Sod, I've actually run three half marathons to raise money for Sikh Sod for various projects. The first project was to raise, a, raise money for a couple of treadmills. And in fact, the school got some other companies to donate some equipment. I think you saw the gym there. Because obviously the children, they need to exercise, they need to stay healthy. So they have a room within Sikh Sod and they have a physiotherapist who's basically got a program for each child to do certain things every week. Um, the, 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 the other two half marathons we've raised money for iPads with specialist communication applications to help the children communicate and really try and get across what they feel. A few years ago, and I'll finish with this if I may, a few years ago my wife and I were interviewed by the Mishpacha magazine about our Aliyah, what, about Shmuel, about Sirk Sod and what they've done. And at the very end the interviewer said, well how would you best sum up what Sirk Sod have done for you? And my wife came out with a brilliant answer which really sums up what, um, what we felt. And she said, we came to see Sod with a burden and they gave us back a son. Thank you. <laughs>